Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a MIDI controller or a control surface to control plugins in Reaper. Now in this video, I'm using a MIDI controller. But if you have a control surface that doesn't have drivers or patches to work directly with Reaper, this still may work for you. So it's a way of controlling our plugins using that controller or any MIDI controller or keyboard that has faders or knobs. So let's start off in our preferences. We'll go down here to MIDI devices and turn on the device that you're using. I'm using the M-Audio Axiom 49. So I'm gonna right click it, enable the input, and also enable the input for control messages. Now we're gonna open a plugin that we can control. Now in this video, I'm gonna start off with Reaper's EQ, but it doesn't matter what plugin we use. Any plugin in Reaper should work the same. So we'll go to the channel effects and we'll choose Re-EQ. Let's enable the high pass filter and let's set up the frequency control to be used with a MIDI controller. Now the MIDI controller I'm using has eight faders and eight knobs and a bunch of buttons. You might have more or less, I'm gonna start off by touching this parameter. So if we go to parameter up here, it shows on the last touched, frequency high pass. If we didn't choose this, we'd go down here and then go to learn and choose it here. But by clicking this first and making this the last touch parameter, we can just go right here and choose learn right from this menu. So we'll choose it and that opens up this dialog. From here, we could teach Reaper which slider, knob, or button we want to use to control that parameter. So if we just touch it on the MIDI controller or the control surface, it's gonna see it. In this case, MIDI channel one, continuous controller 75. Now don't worry about the number. Yours is probably gonna be different, but notice it's MIDI channel one. This is important because we could use this later to control different plugins and it's also not gonna work if you change your MIDI channel. So be aware of this. We'll choose Absolute, which is gonna use the full range of that controller. Now I'm gonna turn off all the options over here. We'll go through those in a bit. And now if I move that knob, it changes the frequency, in this case of the high pass. Now we can go through and set up every parameter in this plugin, but let's not do that yet. Let's go through the options first. Now the way it's set up right now, it's only gonna control this plugin. So if we close this and put an EQ on this track, let's enable the high pass. And now if I move that knob or slider, it doesn't control it. In fact, it's still controlling this one. We're just not seeing it. So the way we set it up, it's always controlling that one instance of that plugin. Although we could duplicate it. Let's clear this one, open this back up, and duplicate it over here. Let's view them side by side. Because we set them up the same, they're both gonna move together. So that works out really well for grouping or grouping plugins. But in most situations, we're not gonna to wanna to do that. We're gonna to wanna to control the EQs separately for each track. So let's change the way we set it up. Let's clear this one and this one. Select it again, go back to learn, and let's choose some options. If we choose this, it'll only work when that track is selected. So let's duplicate that over here. Let's float them both. So now if we select this track and move that parameter, only this one is being changed. But if we select this track, it affects this one. 
so you can control them separately based on selection. But it's also important to note we could still group them, like a temporary group, just by selecting both tracks. And all this can happen in the background. So if I select this, choose Show and Track Controls on this one and this one, we can close both of them. Select this track, and notice it still moves, just on this track. Select this track, and the same thing. So we can control them separately, even when the plugin window isn't open. But we can change that as well. Let's clear this again, go back to this one, touch this again, go back to learn, and this time we'll choose this option. Enable only when the effect configuration is focused. In other words, when the window is open and it's active or focused. So if I close it, watch over here. It doesn't change because that window isn't active. But if we make it active right here, then that knob controls that parameter. So let's copy it to here, fold them both, and now it's based on the active window. So I choose this, it controls that frequency. Or if I choose this one, the same thing. So that's just a personal preference how you want to work. If you're okay with keeping these closed, maybe you want to see it over here, or maybe you don't need to see it at all. In those situations, we can go back to this option, only when the track is selected. Now, if you notice, we can only choose one. If we select this, the other one turns off, or vice versa. For now, we're going to choose this. So it's only going to work when that window is open and active. And we could also choose Soft Takeover. What this does is it prevents jumping from one setting to another. If I move this up here, then I use my controller. It's not going to move until I cross this spot. I'm moving it now, and it's not moving. But if I move it up to right here, it eventually grabs it. And after that, we can control it. So it's a bit softer. Where the other option, with this off, it's going to jump very quickly. So if I move it up here, move my controller, it jumps to where the controller knob is. That's just a personal preference. For me, I like to leave this off. So now let's go through and do the rest of the plugin. We have this one set up. Let's go to the next band, which is a low shelf. Start with the frequency. Choose a different knob. And let's do another one for the gain. So now I can control the low shelf filter with those two knobs. Bring up the gain, or bring it down, or change the frequency on the fly. Let's do another one for band number three, which is a parametric or peak EQ. We'll do the frequency, move my knob, and do another one for gain. Now we can control those with those two knobs. Move the frequency or the gain. Let's delete band number four. Now this one is a high shelf. Let's do the same thing. The frequency and the gain. Change the frequency or the gain to adjust that high shelf. Now, if you notice, we're not setting it up for bandwidth on these. 
You could do that if you want, but I don't adjust that as much, so I'm leaving that off for now. So right now, this plugin is set up using seven knobs. The high pass frequency, the frequency and gain on the low shelf, on this band filter, or parametric, or peak EQ, and the high shelf. Now the one problem with this, if we close it, if we make a new one over here, it's not gonna automatically work with this one. If I adjust the high pass frequency, it's not set up, because we set it up for this one. Now we could duplicate it and get the same effect, but that's not the best way of working. We don't want to start off with our previous setting each time. So a better way of doing this, let's clear this one, is to go over here and choose default controller mappings. And we could choose right here to save this as the default. So if we do that, now if we add the re-EQ plugin to this track, by default, it's gonna be mapped the same way. Once we open that same plugin, it's already there. But this is just set up for one plugin. What if we wanna use other plugins? We don't wanna dedicate our controller to one plugin. That's where our MIDI channel comes in. Let's close these. Let's add another plugin to this track. Let's add a compressor. We'll use Recomp. And let's set this up the same way. But we're gonna change one thing. We're gonna change the MIDI channel on our controller. So I'm changing it to MIDI channel two. And I can do the same thing with the Recomp compressor. Click the threshold. Go to learn. Choose our first knob. And now it shows up as MIDI channel two. But it's still the same controller. But because it's on a different channel, it'll work separately. So now we can adjust our threshold on this compressor. Or the attack. And the release. And the ratio. Adjust the release, or the attack, or the threshold, or the ratio. And we can save this as a default right here. So now, let's clear this. Let's add a re -EQ on this track. Go back to MIDI channel one on our MIDI controller, and make our adjustments with the CQ. And add a compressor. And change our controller to MIDI channel two. And we can make adjustments with the same knobs. Now I should mention, we only have to worry about MIDI channels if we choose this option, enable only when track is selected or if it's turned off, where it's gonna work on any plugin in our project. But if we choose this option, enable only when the window is active or it's focused, then it doesn't matter because it's only working on one plugin or effect at the same time. So you can use the same MIDI channel for the EQ, compressor, or any plugin you're working on. But that only works if you choose this option here. Enable only when the effect configuration is focused or the window is active. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to control any plugin using any MIDI controller in Reaper. And it also work with control surfaces. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Bye.